Hey, I'm Mark Rutten. Welcome back to Nomad Boat Building. This is the 2.4 meter project. Now today is a big day, big, big day. Today we add the last big part onto the boat. Anything else that goes in is just stuff that kind of bolts on or drops in or whatever else. But this is the last bit that we got to attach to the hull. And that part is the box keel. Now remember back from episode nine, we build a box keel. And by that, I mean, it's a hollow box. It's sort of teardrop shaped or foil shaped, if you will. And it's basically a big parallelogram and it's not very fancy looking and it's hollow. Now, the idea is that we're gonna put loose lead ballast into that box keel and that's just part of the class rules. And when I built that, I also built this plywood floor that fits inside of our boat. And I already cut a hole and a little step into it that that box keel and its fiberglass flange all fits into. And that was in preparation for today, where we cut out the rest of that hole, we cut through the keel and through the planking, and then we just drop this thing into place and it will seat itself at the proper attitude and the proper depth for this hull. And that was the part that I was concerned about, which is why I went to all the trouble of trying to think this through way ahead of the game. So without further ado, let's get to work. I'm getting ready to install my box keel here and I just thought I'd show you my drain. At first I'd put a drain hole right on the bottom. Then the client informed me that the carriage that he had built for this thing or the dolly is such that there's this, it's, this thing sits on a aluminum plate so there's no access to it. So we needed a, a drain hole on the side. So we got one right here. And so the way I built this is I made up this little stack of pieces of fiberglass uh, G10 and I got this little threaded brass insert here and so those are just adding a little bit more meat to the, to this affair and so on the back side of here this guy has basically been inserted drilled a hole through the hull of the, uh, the box keel. This thing is buried so deep in there in such a tight spot I couldn't reach in there with my bare arms so I made this little stick with this little stud on there and basically we put a pile of epoxy onto this, slipped it in up through the hole and then I just used a, a quarter inch nut and washer on the outside that I screwed down into this guy that, would, that sucked it up into position and we just let it cure that way. Once it was cured, I just simply pulled that bolt out, countersunk the hole, and then gobbed up this uh, new bolt with uh, some wax, put a little o-ring on there to act as a seal, I screwed that down into place, and, and then the, uh, put epoxy in there so that when this was screwed down, it created sort of a, a custom-fitted seal for this little fastener to fit into. So. When we go to use this, this is just going to suck right down into there and that o-ring is going to compress and make this a watertight fit. That guy is going to drop right down into there. So I need to cut my hole. That's pretty straightforward. The bigger issue is this won't touch ground with the boat at this height. So I need to raise the boat. And I've only got this much height to work with to get this over the side. I suppose I could feed it in. All right, well. That shouldn't be too much of an issue. Let's focus on cutting a hole on the bottom here first. Okay, so this is the angle at which our keel runs. So let's see. So there's my starting point. If you think this isn't making me nervous, you're wrong. Come on. It's really hard to see what I'm doing here. Oh, 
for a saw through the bottom of the boat. And it's really hard for me to see as if I'm on center. Now, luckily, I, I, I plan for this to be sort of a sloppy big hole. And uh, we'll just fill it all up with epoxy, whatever doesn't take up space with the keel. That was ugly. <laughs> uh, <woo. laughs> right on the money. Okay, there's my two holes. Hole number one. Hole number two, we still have to finish that one off. Well, let's have a look on the outside. And here we go, number one landed right on the money. Number two. Right on the money. Okay, now to drill our first hole up here to uh, help knock this out. So I'm using a hole saw just because this is such a tight turn. I can't think of any other tool I'm going to be able to get in there and uh, have this thing come out. Now, one problem. I have, you know what? I need to change my drill bit. The pilot bit is too short. Okay, so I put a big long pilot bit on there to help guide me. Woo, that's loud. I need to plug my ear balls. Do not know what the best method for doing this is. I'm gonna try a jigsaw, I think. Um, I'm not sure. I, I can very rarely use jigsaws for stuff like this. I think once I get to there, it's gonna work pretty good for cruising through. Just getting started is the tricky part. Let's see. certainly lacked the grace I was envisioning, but nonetheless, I think it was generally effective. So let's see. I'll just screw. Okay. Go with the multi master. Here we go. Cool. Okay, so there's our hole roughed out. That's pretty ugly, but we'll get that cleaned up in the shift.
don't need this to be a super pretty hole by any means. It's all going to get buried and filled up, but I think that should do the job. So we'll just do a little clean up here and then see about fitting the keel in. going on here. All right, I'll try lifting with my hammer. A little close. Oh man, my inspection mirror is hooped. Got epoxy all over it. It's just a smeary mess now. I cannot... Okay. A little far out. What about these guys? I'm going to work on one at a time. So those guys are going to get nibbled out forward. Let's try that first. So get this out of here. So. So close, man. So close. Okay, I really should have done this the first time around. I don't know why I didn't. It was just stupid of me. Let's go with a tick stick. So let's see. The angles that get you. Angles. That center. Leave it like that. Okay. So this is a reference, the back of this guy, because I know it fits well. And then center to center here. Let's try that out. Okay, I know there's going to be a bunch of carvers that just freak out when they see this. Just look away. Look away for a few minutes. Okay, if only, I think I'm there, it's just there's one little, it just, it just seems, to feels like it's hanging up on something and I don't know what, I can only think it's this one little bolt on the back side here. So I'm going to try chalking that up and just hit it with some pink chalk here. We're going to drop it down and see if it leaves a spot in the pocket that it was sitting in. So, Push down here, it can rock. See, Not like that. I sworn I had a flatter registration before, so I'm trying to figure what that is. Aha! There's a spot. What?
this thing isn't heavy at all. It's just that it's super awkward to deal with this with the low ceiling. And so, and I kept bashing the boat. Super hard to get at too. Well, that's pretty damn good, actually. All right, I've got the laser level set up here. I'm just trying to dial in the hull real close. Can't do it without blinding myself, of course. It's a delicate operation, but for the most part, everything's looking really good. Here. It's like the amount I'm out is like the smallest. Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not out, I'm just trying to plumb up the hull, but because it's hanging in slings, it's a little bit hard to do. Stop. Well, if I am out, if I am out, it can't be more than by about a sixteenth, because that sucker is right on the money. Splitting my bungs in half on the, on the cut water here. We're very damn close to it. Those bungs may not be 100%. Splitting the keel in half, running right down our seam in the forefoot. So, all I can say is I can't see it getting better than that. Now, what can I do to try and ensure it goes together that way is the question. I think it's just going to go together that way. I think it's just, I did a good job of building it. And uh, so maybe if I just tuck those guys, nestle them up against it. I'm just going to draw a line underneath where I protrude here. Okay, so I have, my plan is to basically gob up the flange with a pile of epoxy and drop this down into here and then just let it set. But the idea being that I'll want it as, I'm not trying to fill the whole void just yet. I, I think what I want to do is get that fixed into place with the fan, flange glued in. And then afterwards, after it's set, I'm going to take the whole boat, flip it upside down onto sawhorses, and then I'm going to fill in around the keel. And I'll probably use some of the total boat low viscosity epoxy, because that stuff works great on the, the box keel. And I'll flood 
in around there in the tight spots with that and just get a little bit of it in there to make sure I'm filling all the voids. And then I'm going to use thickened stuff for a more structural bond around the outside. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna roll a camera on this. Uh, I may not say much or I'll do a lot of cussing and swearing, one or the other. Really gotta focus on trying to get this thing in cleanly and straight and plumb and all that sort of jazz. So my apologies if I don't get the best footage of this. I would really like to, but working alone, that's all I can do. So I'm using a mixture of um, well, West System. Slow hardener and the 207 special coatings hardeners, which is slower still. So I want lots of working time on this. And I'm mixing with colloidal silica and wood flour or filleting blend, whatever you want to call it. Okay, that's about right. So I got sort of a soft hanging onto my stick kind of consistency. I want this to compress easily. Smear down out of the way. A serious mess out of this already. Okay. A spreader. Oh yeah, I'm not on my A game here today suddenly. Somewhere I've got a half sized Cool. That's the one I need, not this big guy. Find a smaller tool. This one's too big. Okay, now the real trick is getting this thing down the hole without smearing epoxy all over it. So here we go. down at the back end. Touch down at the front. Nice. Getting the squeeze out I want. The rope can come out. lead pig I'm going to drop in there just for weight. Oh, yeah, this makes me very happy. <laughs> Woo. It's a big day. This is a really big day. Yeah, 
is surprisingly clean. Of course, the temptation to try and squeeze epoxy up into there is huge, and I'm going to resist that temptation with all my might because that falls into the category of really stupid to do. All right, let's get her leveled out now. Let's clean up. I'm just trying to plumb up the hull. sitting the way it was before. So I want to give it the tiniest little nudge just here. It's so small it's like thinking about it. All right, I'm calling it. I don't think I can get it any better. I'm just uh, I'm treading water if I tried. I got like no wriggle room really to do much more than what's already done. So that's it, I suppose. Time to walk away. Okay, this part might be a little bit of a gong show. But all right. Just decided to wait. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna throw. This is our big day. We're going to uh, try and get this thing flipped over. And but first, we're gonna weigh it. So no, I wouldn't trust that. That's like a single three quarter inch <laughs> screw. It's oh, only be fun to test its limits. Wouldn't it's it? only a hundred pounds. <laughs> And I think if we... You put on this piece of wiring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this is going to be the lifting. Uh, we could, yeah. Well, that's a safety pepper. feature. Yeah. It's sure to get someone killed. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right, so let's turn that on. We're ready to kill everyone, aren't we? Whatever you like. Hmm? Is that what they want? Well, it's Sorry, it, it, it's, uh, it's sort of more metric than it is imperial. We are in Canadian after all. Yes. Yeah, and we've been. <laughs> and we've been metric for years, and no one knows. <laughs> Almost fifty years. It's funny. I just installed a new thermostat in, in my cabin. Uh huh. And I bought it at Home Depot recently, and it wasn't until I got there that I found it. it was like a, a Fahrenheit only thermostat. Oh, oh. Which is fine by me because that's what I grew up with. Yeah. But the girls were just completely perplexed by it. <laughs> like, what is this? I don't understand. How do you guys carry her? 12 years old. <laughs> so I'm thinking if we go two of these, we can oh, yeah, we're balanced. We can trim a little bit. Yeah. The, uh... You know what, Mark? I think if we go upside down, then we can actually lift properly, right? We'll be pulling up instead of pushing, pulling down and trying. Okay, let's say control the trim. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like we have our, have our lifting efforts. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, what are we going to do here? Try and just take up on this maybe? And yeah, take up on this. Slowly shift its self back. Yeah, to the point where the scale is taking the load. Mm -hmm. You got 22, 23 kilograms? That's about heavy enough. <laughs> What's going on with this? I'm kind of curious to know if it suddenly trims bow heavy here. Hard. What is it supposed to be? Okay. 
Okay. You want to be a lift and push back. Mm -hmm. You know what's happening is the, the cradle back aft is holding this up. Yes. So. Move this guy a bit more. Okay, stop there. You know what? Just take. How would you. Um, hmm. Get this guy off a little bit. I think. Yeah, this. Yeah, you know, we're just. This is where you set your house. No? Yeah. <laughs> You're not wrong. Okay, without all the ballast in the bottom, it's going to. Yeah, it's not I wonder if we should throw a third strap. That's good. On... It weights the weight. I know, but I'm just wondering about for stabilizing it. I wonder if we should throw a third strap in here. Because this guy's off. Well, did you get one of these guys going? This is only one strap. Here we go. What's happened is the uh, the guy slipped the the um, connections. The, I'm gonna keep this guy lightly attached here. Now what happened to Kate Brown? Uh, I think it's general. just a question of height. Do you, have, do you have a reading on your side, or is this thing just... No, it's powered down. So, question is, if you power it up, will it go right to it's weight? It's tear, <laughs> yes. This will be the moment the batteries are dead, you know that, right? Yes, <laughs> well... One. One out. All right, well then, what's our solution? Try and lift, the, take the weight off of it, and get it to reset? Yes. So if I lift here, okay, oh, so let me get this hanged up a bunch. Okay, I think that'll be good. And now I'll hoist up on this. There we are. Put the tear on that guy. So much fun. Guy. Oh, and it's. Oh, no, here we go. It's, it's still got a little bit of weight on it. I'm going to loop the slack off on this thing. Okay, 52.2. Are you in your your category, Mark? I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> just I thought Bruce Miller had to do the official weight. I'm. Well, I'm going to actually the person I think will be the most informative will be our dear friend Haas or Hussey. We'll say. Okay. Well, I think his only concern when we're our discussions about weight no. seemed to largely revolve around whether we were going to be competitive. Uh -huh. I mean, there's there's only a minimum weight yeah. for which your ballast is going to be making up. 
Well, there's the, 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 numbers. I right? think it's a funny deal because, of course, if you add sail, you have to take away weight. Okay. So if you're light, you should have more sail. Well, I mean, we have the rules stipulate we need to have a, a, a minimum weight per square meter of hull material. Yes. Hull and deck material. Yeah. And we can't use carbon fiber. No. There's a, there's a center of gravity issue that they're also dealing with. I see. Because ballast, of course, is lower than center of gravity. Looks like we've zeroed out at 55.4. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's at this point. And then we can weigh, weigh the slings. There's a little bit of epoxy to go in there, yeah. but yeah. Um, uh, now the question is how to get this guy over. So I don't know, Mark. Um, actually, I'm thinking a smart thing is to keep this. Where is that strap going? Yeah. I don't like the idea of this thing floating completely free at any given moment. Okay. Well, you said for having something keeping it from going boom. Yeah, and suspenders. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's just keep that on there. This is a pretty precarious location, though, being close to the bow. And uh, well, we have to lower it and then rotate it. We get another one of those, too, that we can. I often wish I had the, the rolling gantry, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so let's take up on this guy a little bit. Okay. And do I want to. Let me just put a tag line between the two just to make sure that nothing goes flying and that stuff happens. As tiny as this boat is, you can see this thing wanting to sneak itself off the, off the bow. Okay, slide on the bow. Yeah. Mark for the moment. I think what we'll do is let's use the here for the moment yeah, and then switch it over to that. I agree. Nobody can just do a slow, ro slow roll to get it sort of. Yeah, I'm wondering if we want something to keep to control that roll as we go, just so we don't, in case we need to stop. I'm just thinking halfway up, we might suddenly say, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> Pause. Pause to contemplate. Okay. Good. Okay, do you want to stay right by that bow yeah. strap and yeah. make sure that that doesn't slide off on us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Let's. That's a nice view. So I'm just wondering if at this point we want to just. Start, lower Start down. lowering down those. Yeah. Take this off. Okay, you want to get that in? I'll hold this. Where it gets what that sling is going to want to flip out the key. And I'm touching now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so. I'll you. So I'll start lowering this down while you move yep. it. for the light. It looks so small again. Damn it. <laughs> wow. It's just like now it's tiny. Yes. Yeah, it's just like a canoe. Oh my god, it's so weird how it does that. Did that so well together. Wow, what a team. Well a couple years back we got to do a uh, a 25 foot powerboat <laughs> which was 
pretty exciting. Now, do you want me to lift while you slide oh, that that's block? Oh, a good point. Um, yeah, I can see myself barking my shins on this thing it's pretty It's mostly the splay of it. All right, yeah, let's, let's do that. The last thing you need to do is we hit it. Shoot a little uh, yeah. epoxy into there. Yeah, I've got some some tall boat sent me a whole bunch of product. Oh, okay. Amongst which is a bunch of low viscosity epoxy in oh. a talking tube. Oh, neat. Okay. And so I used a little bit of it because I, I was concerned about this the seam yep. back here. It was yep. because it came to an absolutely yes. like zero. Yes. Yes. Uh, so how do you make hole. that bond? I didn't. I, 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 well, it was well bonded, but there was still. I wanted to make sure there's just a tiny bit more. So I flooded a little of that low viscosity epoxy in there and just, just slumped right into that little yeah. crevice and yes. filled it up beautifully. So yeah. I'm going to use that to just get the ball rolling on this and make sure that yes. there's no so you don't have a void in micro there. voids in there. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And then we'll uh, fill it up with thickened stuff. Mm -hmm. Looks good. My first job is to fill up this gap around the keel here. So I'm going to use some of this Total boat low viscosity epoxy just to get the ball started. I want it to flow down into the any little nooks and crannies that didn't get filled when I glued in the flange. So I'll let that sort of settle in there and then I'll give it another, come around and do another round of it and just make sure that it's all flowing down. There's a few spots here where it's pretty tight and it might take a moment for it to settle in. And I, I may even just go in there with like a business card or something and kind of give it a little jab just to break any airlocks that are keeping it from uh, sinking. Okay, I was going to save this stuff for a different project, but I've got it on hand. I've got the total boat low viscosity epoxy in this joint. I want to fill it out. Um, and I, I would use West System, but I don't know entirely. I don't think the compatibility between the two would be a big deal. Certainly if it's cured, I wouldn't worry about it. But it's not cured. And I'm kind of impatient. So I think I'm going to fill it out with this stuff. And it'll be easy to get it down to the joint using this guy too. So we're going to go for it. So uh, full disclosure. Total Boat comped me this product here. Very nice of them. So let's go. Come on. Now I don't know how thick this thickened epoxy is. I actually want it to be fairly thick. Hmm. Okay. So it's the consistency I kind of expected it to be. It's very much the same as um, West Systems 610 epoxy in a tube. But I really want to be able to do this, tool it down into the joint. I almost kind of wonder if I'm better off with a proper thickened epoxy than, well, you know, Thicken myself rather than this stuff. Debatable how much this is helping me right now. I mean, it's nothing against the product exactly, it's just the application I'm trying to use it for. Okay, now the last little job is I'm going to just try and Tool this out well. I don't think I'm going to get the tooling done on the first shot here very easily. I think I think I'm going to get something that's going to need a little bit of sanding, and I'll probably come back and hit it with a second coat of something to tool this out. But come on.
All right, well, I am going to leave it alone, I think. Yeah, because I can't figure this out very easily, so I think we're just going to do that, and I might come out and sand back all the humps and bumps. We'll see what it looks like. We might just hit it again with some uh, different, a different epoxy mix. This stuff is not the nicest consistency for tooling. It's okay, but it's not not quite there. And there's a few little tiny bits and pieces of junk on the keel here that I didn't notice before that are keeping me from getting just the right consistency. Okay, I changed my mind a little bit. I decided I didn't like the tooling I was getting from that last tool. I am going to kind of claw back on it. There's a technique that I use where I take a cloth, wrap it around a putty knife here, and I just saturate that cloth fairly substantially with alcohol. And just do that. And that just takes off the excess. I'll probably have to come back and hit it with something else to sort of fill in a slight joint there later, but you know what? Better to do that than to have to sand back first to do that. So I'm going to be stuck doing that anyway. Let's minimize the stuff that I have to deal with. So that cleaned that up pretty good. There's very little material there. I wish I, had, I wish I had been more careful about cleaning off this keel before. I didn't realize how much stuff was there because that's screwing me up. Probably have to ferret a little more heavily right there at the front of the joint, which has got a lot of stuff. That's okay. I've already done the same thing to the other side and I'm just trying to clean up this last little bit. All right. That looks pretty good. The shop motto, learn when to walk away. Okay, that's a wrap. We got that keel in. We got the boat flipped over. Nothing went sideways on us. A little bit sideways, but nothing got damaged, and that's the important thing. The next episode, we'll probably get on to paint, so please join us again. And I want to thank everybody who's been supporting this channel on Patreon, and everybody who supports this channel by watching it here on YouTube, and I appreciate all of you. And until next time, ciao for now, folks. Put on the tee. Time for some cricket. <laughs>